What's up guys, it's John Sintich on the Pile Residential team with eXp Realty. Making another video for you today. This one's gonna be for first time home buyers, although you don't have to be a first time home buyer to get valuable information out of this video. We're gonna be going over the questions that you might have going into a first time purchase of a home. When I first bought a house, I wasn't even a realtor yet. I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what a mortgage was. I didn't know anything about real estate at all. And it was freaky, it was scary going into the process of buying a house. Um, I literally didn't know my ass from my elbow, you know, as they say. It was quite, quite nerve wracking and I didn't know what to expect. You know, there was so many things that pop up during a transaction, I'm like, oh, what's this, what's that? Luckily, my broker at the time, she was great. She answered all our questions and she put us at ease. Um, but going into it, you know, it would have been much easier and much less stressful had I known some of this information that I'm about to share with you. So there's gonna be some great information here that's gonna help you on your home buying journey. Now, if you find the information in this video helpful, I would love it if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be making a ton of more content in the future here, and I hope you like it. Let's get into it. So in order to understand you know, the entire process, we definitely need to get into the market itself, what's going on in the market and what's driving some of these crazy prices right now here in 2022 and over the last two years in general. So just looking at the state of the market currently, it is a very, very, very competitive market here in the south suburbs of Chicago. You know, why is that? Well, you've got tons of people leaving the city. They don't have to work in the city anymore. You know, they can work from home. So if they didn't want to live in the city, they're leaving the city. They're leaving the high rise condo for a little piece of property in the suburbs. You know, they're looking for a three bed, four bed homes with an office for the remote work. And we also have millennials, you know, the largest buying segment of the population is now on the market and they are creating, you know, tons of competition for the best properties. Now, if the home is priced in the middle of the road or even under market value, that's where we're seeing these crazy, you know, 10, 20, 30, 50,000 dollars over list price in some cases. Now you hear that and you might think, well, this house isn't gonna appraise. How are these houses appraising? Yeah, that's a good question. Will the home appraise for the sales price? That's way over you know, what they're asking for. And maybe you don't even know what an appraisal is or what it means, so that's fine too. I had no idea you know, what that meant. I had no idea what any of this crap was until I got into real estate. So let's get into what the you know appraisal process looks like a little bit here to give you a better understanding. The appraisal is part of the real estate transaction where the buyer's lender, so the organization that's giving you the money to purchase the property, they hire a third party to come out and evaluate the house and evaluate the property to determine the value of it because they want to know that they're making a good investment. You know, they're giving you money to buy the house. They want to know, you know, what the house is actually worth. The buyer and the seller have no input on who the appraiser is, okay? And the appraiser submits their value of the home after they go and look at the house. They submit it to the lender. And oftentimes, the home will appraise for the value of the sales price. But with these insane sales prices that we're seeing in this hyper-competitive market, we are starting to see you know, an increase in appraisal gaps. Okay, so what is an appraisal gap? Let's talk about that. An appraisal gap is when, for example, a home is under contract, okay? So let's say it's under contract for 380,000 and the appraisal comes back at 370, okay? There's a $10,000 gap in the sales price and the appraised value. So what the sellers are looking for now is a guarantee when you make your offer that you're gonna cover that gap because the bank is not going to lend over that appraised value. And I'm sure many of you are saying, okay, well, I don't have the cash to cover that gap. I would sure as heck didn't when I bought a house. You know, that doesn't mean though that you have to lose out on that house. I do actually want to stop for a second and go back because I kind of casually glossed over, you know, the, uh, the concept that a seller is going to ask you to cover the appraisal gap. You're probably like, dude, what are you talking about? That's, that's nuts. Yes, this is starting to become commonplace here. So let's take the perspective of the seller for a second. Let's say you're selling your house and you get 10 offers. And let's say five of those offers are offering $20,000 over your list price. So how do you pick the, the correct one? How do you pick the right offer in a sea of offers that are $20,000 over asking price? Well, if one of those offers says, if the appraised value comes back below our offer of $20,000 over list price, we're gonna cover that gap. So then 
from the seller's perspective, I'm gonna say, absolutely, I'll take that one. Because they're gonna bring cash and they're not gonna hold up the sale because the bank doesn't wanna lend them over the appraised value. Well, they're gonna cover that gap. So that's why sellers are starting to ask for that because it's becoming more common and you know sellers are hearing about that and they're saying, oh, well, I want that for my house too. If that situation occurs, I'm going to ask for you know appraisal gap. So that's what I mean when I talk about that. But it doesn't mean if you don't have the cash, like I said, to cover that gap that you will lose that house. So let's talk about the solution to that problem. There's a few options here. So if you're fortunate enough to have a family member lend you money to cover that gap, you may go that route. Or if you were going to put 10% down on the home, you could go 5% down and use that other 5% to cover the gap. This is why it's crucial to be working with a great lender that's creative and solutions oriented, okay? I work with a lot of these kinds of lenders, so you know I can put you in touch with, with one of them to get you on the right path with financing because that makes a huge, huge difference in writing up competitive offers is having that creative lender that helps you with these sticky situations with appraisal gaps and, and all that fun stuff. Some of you might be thinking, you know, oh, he said 10% or 5% down for a down payment. You might be wondering, why didn't I say 20% down? You don't have to put 20% down. That's a myth. It's been well known for years now. So if you didn't know it, congrats. Maybe you just woke up to some really groundbreaking information. <laughs> yes, with a conventional loan, you can typically put down 5% and even less in some cases. You know, with an FHA, a government loan, you can put 3.5% down. And there, there's even some conventional loans that will help you with that. And you can even put 0% down in some cases. But it's important to know that these kinds of loans, 3.5%, 5%, they're kind of losing out on these multiple offer situations where you have another buyer that's putting 20% down or some investor that's putting cash, all cash. You know, these, these offers with lower down payments, they're losing a lot in these more competitive listings. So let's talk about solutions to this problem. What if you're a first time home buyer and you're not quite in the financial position to put down even 5% on a home? You know, maybe you're looking at three and a half percent down for your down payment. So how are you gonna get an offer accepted in that scenario when you're in this super competitive market? You have to really sit down and review your goals and decide what you wanna gain out of home ownership. Yes, buying a home is an emotional decision it's a lifestyle decision but if your long-term goal five to ten years from now is to be in the dream home so to speak you may want to think about building equity to increase your buying power so that you can compete with these other buyers for the best properties so how do we do that what do I mean by that can you put your business hat on for a minute and think maybe hey maybe I buy a cheaper home that requires a bit of fixing up you know, it's not going to be as sought after as these turnkey properties. And you can add a ton of equity if you find something that doesn't need $40,000 in repairs and updates. My fiance did this exact thing with our first house, okay? We bought something that needed new flooring, you know, throughout the entire home. And that was really the major expense. The rest was all paint. You know, we put neutral paint on the walls and we painted the cabinets and we changed out a few sinks and light fixtures. We put like five grand into the house. And guess what? We gained like 30% equity in our home after two years. Now, of course, that, you know, a lot of that had to do with the market over the last two years, we totally exploded. But without that, we gained some equity in the home just by, you know, fixing it up. Now we have leverage to sell this property if we wanted to. And we have a ton of buying power for a bigger home. Or we can save money for a down payment and then rent this home out and make money on it every month. This is the American dream, guys. This is cash flowing assets that build your wealth. All right, so what else? What else can we do? What other options are there? What other solutions are there to succeed in this insane, crazy, hyper-competitive market? Another thing you can do is you can go look at properties that have been on the market for two weeks plus. It doesn't mean the house is falling down. It just means it could be overpriced a little bit, you know, and you'll have much less competition on these houses. You might be able to get it at list price if there's no other offers. Or you can rely on your trusty agent, your realtor, to reach out to for sale by owners and off-market sellers that might be interested in selling their home. You gotta find a realtor that's willing to put in that kind of effort and that kind of active marketing in this crazy, hyper-competitive market. So that's a very important thing to explore. The number one thing 
I can recommend after all of that information I just gave you is patience and persistence. You have to do the right things. You have to follow that advice that I just gave you. But even doing all that, you might lose out on property still. You might make five offers, six, seven, eight. Some people are making 15 offers on houses before they get one accepted. That's grueling. A lot of people don't tolerate failure well. So this is something that I would definitely stress is you have to be willing to fail and you have to be persistent and you will succeed. You will get a house. There's an abundance of homes out there. It seems like there's not. There's always going to be homes for sale. You know, we're not going to run out of homes. They're going to come to the market. You just have to be quick. It's, it's all about speed and confidence in your decision making. So the more you learn, the more education you get, the more confident you're going to be and the quicker you are going to be to pull the trigger on an offer and write the correct offer and get the house. Be patient, be persistent, and you will get it. You will get the house. Once you do get under contract, keep watching my channel. I will be putting out more information. I'll put out a video about what you do under contract and all the steps and processes involved in that. That's a whole nother video in and of itself. So if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and like it, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for more content coming your way. I enjoyed making this one, guys, um, and I look forward to doing another one. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you guys.